Hey everybody, Calvin Nation here with another video for you. In today's video we're going to be talking about this guy right here. This is the Tachyon 2. Some of you guys know the original Tachyon and some of you also know that it was one of the best flippers or production flippers out there and um, the Tachyon 2 is definitely even better and totally blows out pretty much any production piece on the market right now, especially for the price. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about two things. A video about this tachyon that I got coming out tomorrow should be really cool. We'll talk about that later. Also, just talking about the specs, uh, giving it a review as well in this video. So, um, like I said, it's one of the best production flippers out there, especially with the price. Take a look at this here. 260 shipped. I believe that's still going. I know it was a pre-order price, and a lot of people did get their... Uh, tachyons already, but I think there's still a pre-order price at 260 for I think all the models. If not, 280 is still a ball in price. I mean, 280 for an almost let's see how long is it? 9.95 inch bally. So I mean, it's 10 inches of titanium and premium steel, and it's a bushing-driven knife. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, 4.7 ounces. It's it's definitely a steal for what you're getting. I mean, the 42 was 280 retail and is now going for like a, you know, 480, four, sorry, not 480, like 450, 400, 350, that kind of thing. So, I mean, compared to a 42, uh, pretty much any other production piece on the market, this thing is just a total steal. Uh, also, going to definitely outflip your your 51, your Chimera. Uh, now, not sure if it's going to outflip the Alpha Beast. Probably not, um, but I haven't got to handle that one yet. And a lot of people say it outflips the 42 already. To be honest, I still prefer my 42 better. It's what I learned with. It's what I flipped for with for a solid like two whole years. So I mean, I don't think I'm really going to uh, have a flipper that ever really tops this just because of the sentimental sentimental value and just. I don't know, I guess the pref preferences that have formed by flipping that over the few years. So I still do like a lighter knife, but I mean, for the average flipper out there, it totally blows out the 42, the 51, that kind of thing. Um, I actually think it's very similar to the Basilisk. Another nice thing about the knife is it's actually a fair bit longer than the Basilisk. You can see there, I'd say probably even a half inch longer. So you're getting a lot more reach than your average bally, and yeah, it's just amazing. The flippability is it's superb. And that video, which I might as well talk about right now, uh, you'll see a little bit more about the flippability. When I get a knife for the first time, I'm not, you know, amazing. You don't always try everything you want to do, and I wanted to get this video a video out as quick as possible. So the flipping isn't, I mean, absolutely amazing, but um, what this video is is it's a montage of this knife, close-ups, flipping, all that kind of cool stuff, um, to a cool song. Unfortunately, I couldn't use you know my typical knife party um, song. had to use a royalty-free song because it's going to be shown on Blade HQ's channel. As you know, Blade HQ does some collaborations, um, and uh, they wanted to do a collaboration with me. They like my work. And uh, that was extremely flattering, and I had a great, great time working with them. Blade HQ is freaking awesome. I mean, you can't beat them, seriously. Blade HQ is the best knife dealer out there ever. Um, so I recommend them 100%. Go check them out, and please check out my video tomorrow. Uh, that's going to be coming out again, this montage for this knife. It's going to be really, really sweet. Actually, you know what? I'm going to give you a preview right now. So there's your preview, quick couple second preview, just wanted to give you a sneak peek and just wanted you guys to check it out, hopefully that got you kind of excited, hopefully my upload speed is brutal, hopefully this even gets out before it, um, so yeah, can't wait for that to be up and running and uh, you know what, Blade HQ, one more time, best guys ever and Ben, the guy I personally dealed with, uh, dealt with, sorry, and the guy who you usually see doing the reviews for these knives um, on the channel that they have, Knife HQ. Um, he's just a really, really solid guy and had a great time working with him as well. So I'm going to link you up to that video once it's out, so probably 
a day after I put this video out, I'm going to link you down there to that montage. Hopefully in the montage there will also be a link to this review uh, so you can kind of flip between them if you want to get a closer look at it through the montage or through the review. So um, that's enough about that. Let's talk about this knife a little bit more. Alright, so we might as well start off with what Microtech themselves has to say about this knife. Uh, they say, unlike the hypothetical faster than light tachyon particle, the tachyon balisong from Microtech is factual, proven, and a reality. After an extended leave of absence, the tachyon has been reborn as a tachyon 2, boasting revamped specs with a celebrated Microtech fit and finish. The tachyon 2 will be sure to please the balisong flipper, collector, and overall knife enthusiast. The tachyon 2 features milled skeletonized titanium handles with a non reflective bead blast. Finish, uh, sorry, bead blast finish. The classic Bowie blade is made of 154 CM stainless steel with a stone wash finish. The latch and hardware are all 416 stainless steel. It has anodized blue, uh, kind of purpley blue spacers. Torx construction allows for easy maintenance. Includes phosphor bronze composite bushings with, uh, or sorry, which sport ultra high slip properties and great tensile strength. Alright, so that's what Microtech and Blade HQ have to say. If you want to check that out, it's just on Blade HQ's page there. And let's talk a little bit more about what I have to say. Start off with a tip like we usually do, work our way down to the bottom of the handles. Um, I've mentioned before, like on my Basilisk, I'm a little bit wary of a really sharp tip. As you can see, especially from the side, this one does have a really quite aggressive tip. I'll get the basilisk in there for you one sec just to show you the differences here. Originally I was a little scared that that tip might be a little too sharp and might uh, do some damage when you're flipping and it still will but if you do have a look here um, from the side it looks really quite deadly but if you put it up on this angle you can see the swedge actually does keep pretty good thickness all the way to the tip unlike the basilisk where it's just really deadly sharp there. Um, the tachyon 2 is definitely a little bit duller but still keeps that really slick and slender shape of a really uh, pointy bowie. So that's really cool. Um, so compared to your average bally, this is going to be a little bit, um, you know, a little bit worse on you if you do land or catch the tip, um, you know, compared to your 42 or your 51, something like that. Uh, but it's still definitely going to be better than I assumed. So. Watch out for that tip, be wary of it, but it's also not as big as a deal as I originally thought. Maybe as well as uh, some of you guys originally thought. So, there's the tip. Let's work our way down the blade as well. You can see that swedge. Already have a look at that. Um, got the three-hole pattern, the Microtech logo. Let's have a quick look at the stone wash. Always hard to get that on camera, especially with this glare, but... Uh, there's a stone wash, maybe farther back, it might be easier to see as well. It's pretty nice, um, comparable to pretty much any other stone wash. I don't see any flaws in the face of the blade here. Only flaw that pretty much everyone has on their knife, and I don't know if it's a flaw, I don't know if they meant to do this or what, but you can see there's a little bit of a pattern change on the spine there. At first I thought it was like an elevation change, uh, but it doesn't seem to be that way. It just may be, it might just be a reverse in milling pattern. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure. So, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't look great. I don't know exactly what it was meant for. Again, if it was meant for anything, could have just been a mistake. Who knows? But really a complete non-issue. I actually really like the look on this side of the, uh, um, I don't know, milling mark. I think it's kind of like a, a bark, kind of like you see on the Alpha Beast or the original Alpha Beast, that is. Uh, I think it's pretty cool, kind of an unfinished look almost, but still finished at the same time. It would have been cool if they either had this or that go the whole way, instead of just that little mark there, but who knows. Maybe they did it because of specific reasons. Maybe they thought that would give you more grip or something um, when you're twirling, I don't know. But uh, definitely a little bit weird. Also, completely not an issue at the same time. So let's keep moving on. Uh, show you the markings actually it says 154 cm there also you can see mine says serial number 146 this is the same one in the blade hq video i believe it says november 2012 microtech tachyon 2 
I believe the ones that don't have the serial will say Microtech Tech or sorry Tachyon 2 right there instead of up there. Um, let's have a look over here at the Tang pins. Obviously, a Tang pin system instead of your Zen pins. You can also see pretty thick phosphor bronze washers in there. Also, while we're at it, I'll show you a little look at the play. This is a week of pretty solid flipping, lots of drops, and uh, a Loctite job as well. And uh, that's all there is. So, I mean, it's super, super minimal. No blade rub. So, that's beautiful. Definitely good job there, Microtech. That's why I love bushings. Perfect amount of friction good amount of blade play as well and just really smooth so definitely great great in my books so there's the pivots on the kind of receiving end or female end or whatever you want to call it there's kind of a cone shape which I think is really cool another kind of like futuristic look that Microtech likes I also really like it it's got pretty um, pretty good horns there some people don't care for their, those because of pinching uh, fortunately, I have not been pinched by this one yet, so that's good. Horns, they don't get in the way, I don't even notice them. I love horns for the look. Um, I think a ballet is not fully complete if it doesn't have horns, but that's just my, that's just my idea. Um, other side, we have tamper-proof torques, unfortunately. Some people were a little bit upset with that, but really it's not a huge deal. I'm pretty sure you can get those pretty much anywhere. Uh, I think in Canada they might be a little bit harder to find. I couldn't find them. I actually just used um, a flathead and just kind of squeezed it in there and it actually worked perfect. So whatever, I'll go, I'll run with it. And here you can just see the tank cups. Might as well mention the weird kind of take up issue that this has and it's not an issue. Um, it's just a weird kind of, I don't even know what to say, but if you look here, if you kind of slowly put down one of the handles, you'll see there's a pretty big gap uh, between the two and you have to push them down to get them closer in order to latch that and on most ballys you have to you know you have to push the two handles closer together to get the latch in like here you can see on the basilisk you know to get the latch in like that you have to push them closer together but you're actually physically bending the handles with this one you're not actually bending the handles there's some strange uh, kind of leeway area where they land on, it has definitely has something to do with the tang pin, but they land on the tang pin and you have to actually push them down. And again, like I said, it's not them actually bending. It's just, I don't know, it's just the pivot moving a little bit more closer towards each end of the handle. And then again, you have to push them down just a little bit more as well to latch that up. Latch is really solid, but um, again, yeah, I just don't, really understand that issue to be honest I actually like it no idea why I like it no idea why it's there I don't know if they knew that this is happening I don't know if they meant to try uh, or meant to make that happen it's really quite a strange uh, <laughs> quite a strange issue there but still I like it a lot of people uh, don't have any issues with it they're just confused as a, uh, as I am as well so it is slightly weird but whatever no problem we go down we'll have a look on the inside of those handles hopefully focuses all right it's having a bit of a hard time focusing today it seems but uh, completely flawless on the inside there I've not seen any burrs or any milling marks on the inside um, but I believe compared to the tachyon one this whole kind of handle uh, look is pretty much exactly the same just two holes there three there another two down there and uh, I think a lot of people thought there was originally going to be block spacers in there because this also looks just like the original Tachyon, but instead they put uh, little barrel spacers in there. And these, like I said, are kind of a bluish purple. I think they really look sweet. And originally I thought I was definitely going to get the block spacers. And I think I'm going to leave this one at least how it is. It flipped great. Uh, I like a lighter bally anyway. And I'll sacrifice a little bit of balance for... Uh, a lighter knife so I'm gonna keep this how it is uh, I actually as of now I still do have a tachyon another tachyon coming in I might cancel it um, but I love this so much this knife I'll probably end up just going through with the order so um, and by the way that's gonna be a serrated stonewashed version satin um, 
I had never had a serrated bally, and it could be deadly if I screw up, but I wanted to try it out. So I could get, I'm, well, I might get uh, the block spacer for that one just to try it out, but uh, as far as it goes, these are perfect for flipping anyway. Some people, um, well, it's probably easy to argue that the block spacers will be better anyway, um, but this is completely fine. And like I said, it's already better than your 51, your Camiri, or your 42. And to me, it's very comparable to the Basilisk as well. So with these already, good knife. Let's have a look at that latch. Uh, probably the last thing we're going to talk about. Don't want to go on for too much longer. I think this has already been going on for 15 minutes. Um, show you that latch here. The only issue I really have with this knife is the latch. Uh, and it's not huge because... Um, you could take it off, it might be a little bit hard because there's no torques in there. So that's my one issue really, is that you can't really take it off. Um, I don't know, I just, I don't know why they used the little roll pin in there. It's not really a huge issue with me, like I don't think it looks bad. I just think, why not, just throw a Torx in there so you have the option to take it off. I have a feeling maybe they just didn't want people to take it off, just because people might get cut. I don't know, maybe legal issues I don't know exactly no but uh, whatever I think the latch looks sick a lot of people thought it didn't I think it looks really cool kind of futuristic um, not your standard looking latch kind of reminiscent of a DDR I think some of the DDRs have a similar looking latch I also like the pivot um, like this style the kind of cone style uh, one thing to mention about the latch is that the latch gate is uh, using, or sorry, the latch gate is the spacers. So, because they're aluminum, if you drop the knife, especially right onto the latch, it's going to be denting that aluminum. And since the aluminum is pretty soft, I will go back on what I said in my first impressions video that this won't touch the latch. It now will. Um, you can see there, it just barely touches it, and I've never had it touch it while flipping. And it's so, I mean, it's it's barely touching it. So I assume even if it was uh, touching it while flipping, uh, it'd probably just hit it and bounce it off. But, I mean, still, that shouldn't happen. So that is one issue that I think they should have looked in to more detail about. Um, because that's really something that shouldn't be happening since, like, you know, early 2000s. So that's something that I hope lock spaces will help. But there's plenty of things you can do to keep that latch up here. Um, so I'll probably just put an elastic on there or something. I don't know. Um, just keep it up there from now on. One other thing to mention is that because there's only barrel spacers, uh, one side does act as a latch gate. The other side doesn't really. So it does go all the way down uh, in between the handles. So it's not going to hit the blade because it, it never comes close to the blade but it will come down into uh, the valley here between the two handles quite far and you can see there's probably some wear there from where it has touched and since it is a bead blast it will show um, the kind of polished parts where it does hit quite easy so the latch not so great everything else on the knife is it's really just phenomenal so there's the review on the knife actually one thing I didn't show you yet you've probably already seen, is just a little wear on the safe handle where it receives the latch. So, just show you that, then we'll wrap this up. So, there you go. That's going to be normal. Whether there is a good latch gate or not, that would happen. So, just thought I'd show you. Anyway, there's the knife. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please take the time to go check out my montage when that is up. Uh, show your knife buddies as well. Put a lot, a lot of work into this. All my montages, you know, they're 30 hours of work or so, maybe even more. So I put a lot of work into that. Just, uh, you know, give it a like, give it a comment. Just tell me what you think. Um, and I'll, I really appreciate it. Always appreciate you guys watching any of my videos, even this one, uh, and hopefully my montage too tomorrow. So thank you guys again one more time for watching. Thanks to Blade HQ for everything they do, and I will see you guys for the next video.